Hey guys, in this video, we're going to learn how to make a pop-up show. So when you shoot an obstacle, pretend that this is the username. It'll say username scored five points, and then it should go away, and yeah. Okay, so to get an idea of what we want, let's go into our game um, view right here, and then turn on this kind of default camera we have, and that, let's kind of get the camera to, to kind of mimic what the player viewpoint will look like. So that is kind of roughly, if we're a player, of course, we'll have like a gun barrel right here. But this is roughly what the view will look like for the player. With that done, let's get an idea of what the text pop-up will say. So first, we're of course going to need a text. And guys, I highly, highly, highly recommend you use TextMess Pro. So let's take a minute and just import the essentials. For now, we're fine without the examples and extras, so I'm just going to exit out. And here we have our text. So let's get an idea of kind of how we want this. I was kind of picturing this text, first of all, which is very hard to see. Um, so I was picturing this text kind of popping up like over here in like the left-hand corner. Um, and I was picturing it saying something like player X scored some amount of points like that. And then to make the, it's kind of hard to see what all this transform stuff means. So to make that easier, we can go into scene. And then the way Unity handles canvas, you guys are probably aware, it's just kind of like a massive thing in the sky. And it's kind of weird to switch between the game and the UI. So to do, to make it easier, you can click a UI element and then scroll to kind of a 2D-ish uh, perspective and then press F and it'll um, focus on it. So first let's move it over here. I press W and then I can drag it um, and then T to kind of, well, kind of make it decently sized and then we can maybe auto size. Perfect, all right, so it's a little bit big. Um, you guys can make it look better if you want, but basically that's all, that's pretty much what I was picturing it looking like, so perfect. So let's first make the text say what we want it to say from script. So let's open up our game canvas, and then we need a reference to the text. So we want to say public, and then since we're using TextMess Pro, we need to say using TM Pro, just like that. And now we can say public text mesh pro and there's three of these um, after trial and error the one we want is text mesh pro gui and then let's name it something descriptive we can maybe make this say score pop-up something like that so now we can say score pop-up like that save and then i will go into the editor and link these just like that. And one more thing, I usually like when I'm using TextMesh Pro, I usually just slap on TMP at the end of all my text things to make it clear of what object is actually what. From here, it's actually pretty easy. We already have, we already print the event.message, so now we just need to say score popup dot text equals event message easy so now the debug statement was already working so now the text itself should work and while we're at it let's turn this text off by default and then set it active when we get the event when we get this event so score pop-up dot game object dot set active true really quick before we test let's go ahead and set the obstacle value to five Okay, now we're in game, so if we shoot one of these obstacles, the pop-up should um, display with our username and points. And fantastic, it works. Now, while this works, it's actually going to be problematic if we want to have more than one at the same time. So what we want to do is we want to instantiate them. But if we make a prefab out of it, it actually is kind of weird. Um... So let's look at the canvas really quick and look at the Rectranform 260, 195. Um, and then this canvas, 
it is the same. Oh, width, 800, height, 600. Is that the same? Um, no, see, so really weird. The canvas in the prefab is not the same as the canvas in the game. And furthermore, if you try to edit this, you can't see what it looks like in the game. So if I, if I edit the size of this, right, it's not going to show in the game. So we want to do something else. So what I've actually started doing in my games is first let's unpack this prefab and then we can actually just delete the prefab itself because we won't be using it. And I do this thing called templates. This is non-kosher. I haven't really seen anyone else do this. But when we make something a template, I want to set it off and then in the script right here, we can make this act as a prefab. So it's not technically a prefab. That's why I named it template, but it'll work effectively the same in that we instantiate something and then we set it active with the text that we want. So it kind of acts like it, but it's not technically. So with that in mind, let's go into our script and let's name this instead of score pop-up, score pop-up template, just to be clear that it's a prefab-esque type of thing. So now these will give errors. But that's actually fine. We want to make a new game object right here. So text mesh pro score pop up clone. And we want to set that to an object that we instantiate. What do we want to instantiate? Well, we want to instantiate the score pop up template. Perfect, just like that. And now instead of saying score pop up itself, we just say score pop up clone and score pop up clone again. And now this should work. Okay, so now we're in game, and if I shoot one of these, the pop up should work just the same, but as we see, it doesn't. So, what the heck is happening? Well, if you look, it did instantiate and it does have the right text, but where the heck is it? Well, if we go to scene, we can see that what on earth is this doing? Um, there's a big object, it doesn't say anything and I can't see it. So what's going on? Well, first, UI objects need to be within a canvas. That's why the text didn't show anything. But still, the text doesn't show, it, well, even though it, it is visible now, it doesn't show where we wanted it to. And that's because when you instantiate an object, it goes into world space and then the transform gets all messed up. If you look, these are different. And if we copy and paste the template, into the thing we just instantiated. Remember the template didn't change, it's still there the same as it was. If we copy and paste that, now it should show. So in the script, we need to move the parent object to the canvas, and we also need to redefine the transform from the original template. So from experience, there's four things we need to do to achieve this. For the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna write them. I'll try to explain them, but basically, just know that everything I'm doing, we're trying to solve the problem that we just had. So first, we want to set the score pop-up clone parent equal to the canvas. So we need to say score pop-up clone dot transform dot parent. And we want to set this equal to the game canvas object. To make this very clear, I'm just going to define the game object publicly and name it canvas. If you have a panel or something, this will be very useful because you need to define what panel it goes in. But for now, we just want to say score pop up clone dot transform dot parent equals canvas dot transform. After this, we want to do a few things with the rect transform. So we say score pop up clone dot uh, get component rect transform. And this is the transform that UI objects have in Unity. And first we want to set the size delta. And this is all of these things, I am fairly sure. I, it might just be these, but I think it edits all of these five. And we want to set that equal to the template. So let's just type in template and see if it pops up, which it does. We want to set that equal to that dot size delta, like that score template dot get component rec transform dot size delta. As you can already see, this is very annoying. Um, but there's two more things we need to do. The last two things both also have to do with the rec transform. So let's just copy and paste this twice. And then we want to edit 
the local scale and set that equal to the template local scale as well. And this is this right here. This got changed for me one time, so just to be safe, I edit that every time now. And the last thing is position itself. If you remember, we had to move it back to where it went. So position. So now with all these things, let's go test. So now if it works, we should see another game object pop up right below this one in the canvas. So let's shoot it. And yay, it does. And as you can tell, it works. And to make sure these things don't stick around, let's say destroy score pop-up clone dot game object after maybe four seconds. So now the clone will go away after four seconds, but again, the template will be still be around. Now, as I'm sure you all can tell, this is incredibly tedious and you'll actually have to do this if you have other things to instantiate. So as you can imagine, your code will be very messy and cluttery if you have to call this every time. That is my bird walking across my desk. So something I've done both to avoid writing these every time and to avoid the clutter is to go into Unity and I want to make a script and let's call it UI Translator. Open it up and we actually don't need to attach it to anything and we can also delete this mono behavior and make it a static class. What this means is that basically we can call it from anywhere. So we can just say UI translator dot and then we have access to all its functions. So we don't need to link it in the inspector and we don't need to get a component from anywhere. So what do we want to do with this? Well basically let's make a function called translate text to UI position and that is a pretty lengthy whoops I forgot to put void and that's a pretty lengthy name but I usually like to have my function names descriptive and now let's just basically copy and paste this into this function so as you see we obviously get a lot of errors this one is because I needed to make it a static void because there can only be static functions within a static class. And then these are obviously because we don't have references to them. So let's add references. Let's first take a text mesh pro argument, mesh pro argument, and let's name it text, basically the text you want to edit, which is the score pop-up clone. And let's also take a rect transform and let's name this desired size. And lastly, let's take a game object argument and call this the parent. So now with these, we can basically just go through and remove the errors. So the score pop-up clone, that is the text argument that we made. So we can just make all of those text. We want to set the text.transform.parent equal to the parent.transform and for the template we can actually just since I put this as a rec transform we don't need to get the rec transform so we can remove this and say desired size dot size delta and the same for the rest of the rec transforms just like that and then if we're calling this function we're probably going to want to set the text dot game object dot set active true just like that and with all this done now we can simply call UI translator dot translate and you see it has our pre-made function there and if you can't remember what the arguments are it'll pop up right here for you if you go in the parentheses so first we want the text which is the score pop-up clone it's already of the TMP Pro, which is what the argument takes. And now we want the desired size, which is a rect transform. So we'll say score pop-up clone template rather, score pop-up template dot get component rect transform, since that's what the function takes right here. And lastly, we want the parent, which is simply the canvas, which is already a game object. So perfect.
So with that change to the UI translator script, it should still work the same. So if we shoot this, it pops up, perfect, and it goes away, great. I decrease the time a little bit to 2.5, but you can put it to whatever you want. But yeah, cool, it works. This is exactly what we wanted. You can add fancy animations if you want, and I would also recommend moving the, if you get two in a row, sort of moving them a bit so they don't pop over each other. But yeah, basically this is how I instantiate UI. So if we test it in multiplayer, let's shoot from here, there I am. Bam, it works. Oh, it's really ugly looking. <laughs> but basically, you get the gist of it, it works. Six scored, five points, and let's see if the client works. Um, oh man, my computer is not happy recording and doing two of these at the same time, but let's just see. So it works. This appears in a different place because, let me just show you real quick, and then we will end the video go into our sample scene and it looks weird because the canvas scaler we have it set to a constant pixel size let's just set it to scale and then do match 0.5 so now it should grow naturally and look the same on every device yay and of course since I just messed with the scaling it probably messed up where our object is and it did so let's just fix it really quick um, we wanted it about there, maybe a little bit higher, something like that. So now with the canvas scaler to what we want, this should look the same across any device. And let's remember to set this inactive at the start. Yeah guys, thanks for watching. I might release this video as a standalone that doesn't have to do with Bolt because I think this is a problem uh, with instantiating UI, you know, with or without Bolt. Um, the next video I want to make is the usernames, of course, setting the usernames so it's not just a random, you know, couple of ints. But yeah, other than that, thanks for watching and not happy. We will see you both in the next episode. Bye, guys.